Android P has to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Android updates of all time. It not only refines Android, it also brings a number of cool new features. But let's face it, most of the Android devices out there won't ever see the Android P update. And if you think you have one such device, this video is for you. Hey guys, this is Akshay from bbomb.com and today I'm going to show you how you can get Android P features on your Android smartphone. All of these methods work on non-rooted smartphones as well, so don't worry if your phone is not rooted. Before we get started, how about you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we post a new video. Now then, let's get started. Ah, Android P gestures. Love it or hate it. You know gestures are here to stay and even though gestures on Android P need refinement, they are quite fun. Well, you can get these gestures on your device pretty easily with the Navigation Gestures app by XDA. The app is pretty straightforward to use. Simply download it from the Play Store and grant it all the permissions it asks for. There will be an ADV permission as well and if you don't know how to grant that, you can check out our guide from the link in the description below. The app replaces the navigation bar and switches it with the pill from Android P. You can even customize various gestures according to your liking. For example, I've set a left swipe to go back, tap to go home and swipe up for recent apps. Also, you can customize what the pill looks like. You can adjust its height, its width and even its position on the screen. The app works very well but there's a slight issue with the pill overlapping the icons on the home screen. However, that's a compromise you'll have to make. The launcher in Android P is yet another thing that has changed and well, thanks to an XDA senior member getting the Android P launcher on your phone is pretty straightforward. There are different APKs for different Android versions so you can pick the one that is suited for you from the link down below. The launcher itself is basically ported from the Android P developer preview 2 itself which means it's the real thing, complete with the new Google feed and I really like it. I mean, looking at it next to the Android P launcher on the Pixel 2 XL, it's honestly the same thing. It's got the same features, including the swipe to get to the Google feed, and the new implementation of adjusting the launcher settings which now comes in the form of this app action sort of thing. Every Android update brings a bunch of new wallpapers. Well, Android P, at least the beta, brings just one. I'm talking about this bluish thingy, so to get the Android P look on your phone, it's important that you get this new wallpaper. We have a Google Drive link in the description that you can check out and download the new wallpaper. It looks fine, although I personally find it to be a little bland. Android P is also introducing a whole set of new tones for calls, alarms and a lot more which you can download from the link in the description below. My favorite ringtone from this new ones is this soft tune called Crackle. The Android P preview also brings with it a new screenshot editor built right into the OS itself. It's kind of like iOS 11 screenshot editor and it's a handy tool to have. If you want the same functionality on your phone, well, you can simply install the Markup APK from the XDA link in the description. Once you've installed it, it works pretty much the same way as it does on Android P. The only difference is that once you take a screenshot, you'll have to press Share and then select Markup to edit your screenshot. The tool itself is the exact same tool from Android P as you can see in the Pixel 2 XL here. You can annotate things, highlight them and even crop the image. It's not too feature rich, but for most screenshots, it will do the trick. The new volume menu in Android P is really awesome. It's easy to access and I love the fact that it changes the media volume by default and offers handy shortcuts to set the phone to ring, vibrate and silent. It's very handy and you can get it on your phone using the volume slider app, courtesy of Yogesh Dama. Simply install the app on your phone from the Play Store and grant it the permissions it needs and there you have it, the Android P-like volume slider. However, it's changing the ringer volume by default. 
but you can easily change the default slider to media to make it work exactly like the Android P slider. Here there is no button to switch the phone between ring, vibrate and silent, but this is as close as you can get to Android P's volume slider. As is now customary with every Android update, Android P brings a whole new redesign to both the settings page and the notification panel. Icons are now colored and rounded and the settings page too has colored icons everywhere. Getting this look on your non-Android P device is something you can do with Substratum and the Flux White theme. Once you have both the Substratum and Flux White theme installed, you will have to set things up. There are a lot of steps involved to get this working on non-rooted devices and we have a detailed article on the same that you can check out from the link in the description below. Once you're done, this is what your notification panel and settings page will look like. I know, it's not an exact replica of Android P's setting page and notification panel, but this is as close as you can get right now and honestly, it looks pretty good and quite similar. A really handy and useful feature that Google has introduced with Android P is Lockdown. What it basically does is disables the fingerprint scanner or any other biometric authentication like iris scanners, face unlock or what have you, forcing you to use your PIN, pattern or password to unlock it the next time. This is useful when you're going to sleep and you're worried that someone like Rupesh might use your fingerprint to unlock your phone. To get this feature on your phone, you can download the Lockdown app and give it the required permissions. You can then drag the Lockdown app icon to your home screen and tap it to lock down your device. You can also enable the quick setting style that you can then tap on to lock down your phone. The feature works pretty much the same way as Lockdown works on Android P and it's really handy if you don't trust people around you, which you shouldn't. Google has also announced digital well-being features for Android P to combat smartphone addiction. And while they aren't here yet, you can get a similar functionality through apps. There's off time, which like the dashboard coming in Android P, tells you the amount of time you're spending on various apps so you know which apps are affecting your productivity. You can also create a profile where you can disable apps and notifications to make sure you remain focused. And if you try to use any disabled app, off time will show you a message which will be either motivating or intimidating. Also, as a part of the digital well-being initiative, Android P will be getting an app timer feature. Well, you can get the same functionality via app block. With app block, you can set a timer on your apps. So after you've used the app for a set time limit, the app will be blocked. I find this to be very useful, especially since I find myself wasting a lot of time just scrolling through Facebook looking at dog videos. One of the cooler features in Android P Preview is the dynamic rotation control toggle. It's helpful if you have your phone rotation locked and you rotate your phone. With Android P, you'll get a toggle right there in the nav bar to manually change the orientation. It's pretty handy and you can emulate this feature on your phone by using a free app called Dynamic Rotation Control. Simply install the app, give it the required permissions and then whenever you rotate your phone while it is locked in portrait orientation, you'll get a big toggle on the display that you can tap on to change the screen orientation. It's not as minimal as the one on Android P and it doesn't show up on the navigation bar, but it's there and it works. And honestly, this is the closest you can get right now. Android P also brings support for notches in phones. And if you're a developer who would like to check your app's compatibility with notches, the 10 out of 10 app can let you do just that. It's simple to use and completely free. Well, that was it. That's how you can get the Android P gestures, the Android P look and Android P features on your phone right now. Like I said, the links to all the APKs, the apps, the wallpapers and everything else are in the description down below. So which Android P feature is your favorite? Do let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.